Hey everyone, this is John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Small Telescope, and this is a crash course in the program Stellarium. So the first thing you want to do if you don't have Stellarium yet is download it from the internet. It's free at www.stellarium.org. You just choose your operating system and it will take you to the appropriate download site. Then you choose it from your start menu, and it opens up to a live view of the night sky. So if you open it at night, it will show night. If you open it during the day, it will show the day, very live. Anyway, the first thing you want to do is check your settings. So you want to make sure your location is correct. You can either type in the name of the nearest city or just go on the map uh, and click to where you are. I am in Charlotte. Um, so here we go. So. The next thing you want to do is um, check your time settings. So it is just set to the computer's time, so I'm going to leave it there. But you can adjust this if you want. Maybe your start is a week from now or a couple hours from now. You can you know, look at the night sky as it will be at that point in time. All right. Uh, so here we have some more advanced viewing options. You can change um, how many labels uh, of the stars you want to see, or deep sky objects, that sort of thing. So that is that. Uh, the search window is very important. Um, the thing about the search, it is very spelling sensitive. So if you're looking for the Andromeda galaxy and you spell galaxy wrong, it will not find it. Um, kind of annoying, but uh, it works once you know what you're doing and some advanced options that I, you really don't need to go into this ever um, unless you're doing some advanced stuff like comet hunting and you're loading in comets that are not pre-programmed in the software. Okay, so uh, oftentimes when I, when I open it for the first time I you know flip on the constellations which just helps you direct yourself around the sky and turning on the names helps as well if you don't recognize them by their shape. Um, they have a button for the pictures. Uh, that is kind of a distraction, so I don't use that. You have your grids if you're looking to find stuff uh, based on the coordinate system. Not very common in this day of age because we have software to help us find stuff. Uh, here you have the ground. I usually would recommend leaving the ground on because if what you're looking for is below the horizon, you're not going to be able to see it. So you have three uh, things that you can do if what you're looking for is below the horizon. The first thing is wait until um, you know wait a few hours and maybe it will come up over the horizon. Um, things rise in the east and set in the west. Your second option is to wait until later in the year. Maybe you're looking for Orion, which is primarily a winter constellation. Uh, in that case, uh, if you do your stargaze in the evening, wait till the late fall or winter. Or you could just stay up uh, really late at night and it will rise early in the morning. Anyway, uh, the third and final option uh, for things that are below the horizon, uh, maybe they're too far south for you and you will have to go to South America to see them. Okay, so that's that. That's the ground. You have your cardinal points or your compass rows. You can turn that on and off. Uh, your atmosphere, turning this off gives you a li little bit more clarity. You can adjust your light pollution settings. Uh, in the advanced options. Here are your deep sky objects. So deep sky objects are pretty much anything outside the solar system that is not a star. Um, planetary nebula, globular clusters, open clusters, that sort of thing. Okay, there's your planets. I usually just leave those on. You can switch between equatorial um, and azimuth mount settings. Um, you just leave it to azimuth for now. Uh, center is a very important um, option because if you're looking at how something moves throughout time, you want to be locked onto that object. So you can also use the space bar for that. So let's say if I want to look at uh, this star in Cygnus, I can hit the space bar. Then if I go to, sorry, if I go to the time setting, I can see how that star moves throughout the night, like that. Um, and there's also a set time to now setting, which comes in handy if you're messing with time. Uh, it comes with night vision. Um, 
if you're using this at a star party and you don't want to anger your fellow stargazers. Other options, if, if this uh, information gets, gets in the way, just right click and it will disappear. That comes in handy. Uh, we've got, this is just full screen mode. It defaults to it, it on. I usually turn it off because I'm using other programs at the same time. And then you have satellites, which is kind of cool. If you're using this program outside, you can look up and see what satellites are flying over. And then clicking on them gives you way too much information. Uh, so I'll turn that off. And here's your time settings. You can fast forward, really fast forward, play, set time to now, all those things. And then this is the off button. So that's pretty much all the basic settings in Stellarium, really easy program to use. Um, using it to find things is a breeze, just using the search. Pollux, for example, star in Gemini, which is below the horizon. Um, you know, here it is, if I shut off the ground. If I want to know when that rises, I will just turn on the clock and click forward the hours until that is up in the sky at 5.30 in the morning will not be staying up for that. Anyway, that is your crash course in Stellarium. I hope it helps you find stuff in the night sky. If you like this video, please check out my new sci-fi thriller, The Martian Conspiracy, on Amazon.com. Thanks.